Oh, I just love those two. Oh, Shelley, by the way, have you got any bad habits? Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Have you got any bad habits? I've got no bad habits, but what are you doing? Well, my bad habit is I can't stop eating chocolate. Oh, I'm starving. I love it. Oh, it must be time for eight simple rules. That's next. It's not every day we find out you're different. You are the princess of Shinovia. Rewind and freeze! You are beautiful! To transform from regular to royal isn't as easy as it looks. Is that my fault? You know, most people for a car for their 16th birthday, not a country. Don't you bring me down today. No matter. The premiere of the smash hit comedy, The Princess Diaries. Coming on the 25th of January, only on the wonderful world of Disney. Direct from downtown Main Street, it's Disney's House of Mouse. Who's that knocking at the House of Mouse? We're all knocking at the House of Mouse. Come on in, we're gonna shake the house. We're all rocking at the House Fun makes you jump and shout. Hey, little girl, I wanna dance with you. We'll find so many things to do. So come on in, we're gonna shake the house. We're having a ball at the house of mouse. And now he sings, he dances, he's Mickey Mouse. Oh, I'm the host of Paul Little Mickey Mouse. Had a club that's known as the House of Mouse. Got a ukulele of my little lady is a gal called Minnie Mouse. Oh, how sweet. <laughs> it's our song. Sweet? Well, it's not as sophisticated as Mozart, but hey! Wait, wait, wait. Pluto, stop chasing Figaro! Hmm. Hiya, Clarabelle. What's going on? Haven't you heard? You're not sophisticated. What? Says who? Says Minnie, and then she ran away. Gee, that doesn't sound like her. And it gets worse. Look! I'm looking for a new pal. Are you sophisticated? Let's meet. Signed, M.M. The only person I know with the initials N.M. is Minnie Mouse. Well, there is me, Mickey Mouse. Yes, but did you place the ad? Face it, Minnie wants a new boyfriend. A sophisticated boyfriend. Ha-cha-cha. Finally learning how to read, are we? Just sound out the hard words. Aw, uh, put a sock in it, Mortimer. I'm not in the mood. Say, what's this? Give that back. New pal, yada yada, sophisticated, whatever. Let's meet, signed M.M. M.M.? Why, that's Minnie Mouse. Minnie needs a new pal. Mortimer! Calm down, Squeaky. I'm just teasing you. I can see this is something serious. We gotta make you more sophisticated and fast. We? Why should I listen to you? Duh. If Minnie gets herself a really sophisticated guy, it'll be game over for me. But as long as she's with you, I still got a shot. Gee, uh, that almost makes sense, uh, I think. Sure it does. When I'm done with you, you'll be the highest pollutant polluter on High Falutin Boulevard. Deal? Okay, deal. <laughs> hey, everybody! Psst. Posture, posture. Oh, <clears throat> And now it is my indescribable pleasure to introduce the first of today's animated entertainments. Yes! Uh, 
What's up? Oh, not much. I just came by to see if you'd like to play a duet at the big piano recital this Friday. Piano recital? I will. Oh, thank you, Mickey. I knew you would. Now, here's the music, and you better get started practicing right away, because everybody's going to be there. Practice, practice, practice. Hmm. Easy as pie piano piece. Hmm. That sounds easy as pie. Hmm. Pie. Practice. Ha <laughs> nah. Life's too short for practicing. Besides, there's lots of things I'd rather do. Boy, Pluto, I don't know how long it's been since you had a bath. <laughs> Going on a picnic sure beats practicing piano. Another strike! need to practice. I'm Mickey Mouse. But all the music critics will be there. Critics? Huh. And the president and the queen of England are coming, too. Oh, and what about the vice president? Oh, he's bringing the czar of Upper Hondonia. He is, huh? Uh-huh, and the whole thing's gonna be broadcast live on TV all around the whole entire world. Oh, really? Uh, uh, gosh. Uh, oh, wow! This is gonna be some piano recital. Well, I gotta go by. Let's see here. Easy as pie piano piece. Hmm. Pie. Nope, nope. Gotta practice. <laughs> Let's just take a look at the music. Oh my gosh. I'll never be able to play this.
Easy as pie. <laughs> it, pal. You're doing swell. Minnie will be eating out of your sophisticated hand in no time. Oh, gosh. I sure hope it works. Hands off, beauty. This ain't no library. I wonder what's going on. Didn't you hear? Apparently, Minnie wants a new sophisticated boyfriend. So Mickey has to get sophisticated and fast. Sure worked for me. What? Big hat with feather, tights, fluffy shirt. Chicks love fluffy shirts. And don't forget the bouquet. Well, if you're not sophisticated, I don't know who is. Oh, gee, you really think so? Here she comes. Now, remember what we talked about. Poise, grace, and, um, oh. Big words. When you speak, use lots and lots of syllables. Make sure you use $10 words, and even some $20 ones if you can afford it. Salutations and humble greetings, sweet fair maiden. It is my gracious good fortune to offer you this gentle May Blossom. You. My, you look handsome today, Mickey. Ah, oh, thanks. But what about sophisticated? I mean, don't you think I look sophisticated, too? Oh, Mickey, you're so silly. Hey, Penguin, stop chasing that broom. Well, that could have gone better. In fact, it couldn't have gone worse. But she said I looked handsome. Handsome? That means nothing. You went for sophistication, and all she did was laugh in your face, throw down your flower, run away, and now she's talking to him. Wow. We're gonna have to knock it up a notch if you want to out-sophisticate that bird. I'll do whatever it takes. Excellent. Ha-cha-cha. -cha. <laughs> I'm dressed silly. Just introduce the cartoon. Oh. <clears throat> I am here to introduce Dance of the Goofies, starring me.
And now, a House of Mouse surprise performance. He's suave, he's smooth, he's worldly wise. Mickey Mouse Esquire. Greetings, audience. I am Mikkel Mouse Esquire. And I've decided it's time to show off a more cultured, sophisticated side by painting. <laughs> you know, there's nothing more sophisticated than a fine oil painting. Let the artistic endeavor commence. Huh? Mickey's not supposed to be on stage. It's supposed to be O'Malley and the Alley Cats. Ha-cha-cha. Hiya, Minnie. Well, I see your ex-boyfriend is parading his fancy new finger-painting routine for all the gals. What? My, my ex-boyfriend? Didn't you know? Highbrow Harry up there says he's been slumming it with us lowly folk far too long. He's moving on up without us. I'm looking for a new pal. Are you sophisticated? Let's meet. Signed, M.M. See? M.M. stands for Mickey Mouse. Look! But I'm not. Let's grab dinner and you can tell good old down-to-earth regular Joe Mortimer all about it. For my next sophisticated feat of artistic creation, I will... Huh? Mortimer. I'm in love with a gal called Minnie Mouse. Don't go with Mortimer, he's a louse. Don't want to be fancy, don't want to be schmancy. I'm the same old Mickey Mouse. I won't. Ha, <laughs> oh, Minnie. <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. I'm getting a cavity. Blah. with the alley cats, right? Oh, of course. They're all pros. They know the biz. Mickey, Minnie, this just in, you'll never guess. Word is, that sophisticated personals ad signed M.M. wasn't written by Mickey or Minnie. <laughs> yeah, we know. It was Mortimer. M.M. stands for Mortimer Mouse. He wrote the ad. But that's not the only ad Mortimer wrote. Look. My dearest Clarabelle, will you marry me? Signed, M.M. Oh! Wait a minute. I didn't write that. Mortimer! Oh, of course I'll marry you! <gasps> no! 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 Oh, Mickey Mouse, you know your initials are MM, too. Oh, gosh, Minnie, I don't know what you're talking about. I mean, I had nothing to do with it. We have another star-studded show on the way next as Mickey's about to reopen the doors to the House of Mouse. So come on in, we're gonna shake the house. We're having a ball at the House of Mouse.
Today's episode, the 19th hole is a shallow grave. Act one, under the windmill's shadow. He's getting away! Biggie, I'm on it. Looks like somebody slipped up. Officer, my comic! The ice resurfacer! The Unequaled U-Mans, number 76. This was Mint. It is now near Mint. Oakman is better than the U-Mans anyway. The U-Mans are the next stage of evolution, the ultimate humans. Oakman is a guy who is part tree. Please, get this pathetic human out of my sight. I'm just lucky you were around when this whelp tried to steal my comic. Great Caesar's ghost, where is everyone? The whole school's either at the French Club's Napoleon Lookalike Contest, or the mini masters. I'm too tall for the contest, and well, I'm not a big fan of the mini golf. Things are correct, and here at the X Middle School Mini Masters. Coming off the 17th hole, it's the favorite, Cuzzy Shotwell. Four strokes ahead of last year's champion, Ian Chilton. And it looks like he's gonna run away with this thing. All right, my boy Cuzzy's making things happen. Cuzzy? Uh, hello? It's his caddy that's taking it to the hoop, Chief. His caddy? Don't you grasp the silent cues? The quiet support? The subtle gestures that indicate the whole break's left? Only thing I see is a kid with a custard stain on his shirt handing Cuzzy his putter. Of course. You're looking with your eyes. Start seeing with your heart, Vallejo. Fillmore, this is good stuff. Aren't you the least bit interested in the Mini Masters? I'm not so big on the Mini. And so, we reach the 18th and final hole, known simply as the Peg. Not an especially challenging hole, more of a gimme, really, to cap an amazing round by Cuzzy Shotwell. He's the last one up. Two strokes will win it. It's looking like it's headed directly towards the peg. Bad break for Cuzzy Shotwell. What the? Did you see that? Sometimes you hit the peg, Chief. Not Cuzzy Shotwell. Oh, I'm not liking that shot at all. Hey, my Indian food! What the? Did you see that? Yeah, I did. With my heart. Whoa! I don't think Cousy Shotwell has taken a shot that bad since he got a tetanus booster in the biscuit basket. Oh, my. With that out-of-bounds penalty, Cousy just snatched defeat out of the jaws of victory. That's it. Ian Chilton wins. Ian Chilton wins. And the big question the ex-middle school mini golf community has got to be asking is, what is going on with Cuzzy Shotwell? You know what? We're gonna find out. Fillmore, third. Cuzzy Shotwell? We'd like to talk to you about the match this afternoon. 
the way you played that last hole, some people are thinking it looked a little funny, man. Funny? Funny how? Like someone may have told you to throw the match? I don't know anything about that. Cuzzy, your specialty is bank shots, man. I mean, if the 18th had been a loop or a windmill or some sort of hilarious obstacle, we wouldn't be here talking to you right now. Listen, man, if Steph's going down, we just want to help. You want to help? You can shove off. Cuzzy, if something's wrong, the only way to make it right is to talk about it. You feel like doing that? Give me a call, man. I think we got a definite maybe towards something fishy going down. Yeah, but a definite maybe is a definite maybe not, too. Only other angle is sabotage. Someone messing with the green. Man, Simon, tough break. But I guess you've been having tough breaks all day. You okay, Fillmore? Yeah, sure. Wow, Fillmore, nice shot. Ingrid, there's nothing wrong with this green. You were right, Vallejo. Something stinks with X Middle School mini golf. It's looking like our boy Cuzzy threw that match. Now, we could investigate Chilton, maybe see if he's in cahoots with someone, or we could let that someone come to us. How? The X Middle School Open is in two weeks. We could send a patroller in undercover. They do well, that someone's gonna come knocking. So, who do we send in? Fillmore. I said it before. Mini golf's not my bag, Ingrid. You sank that ball on the 18th like a pro. The stuff you knew about Cuzzy, how you were checking out that green, you know mini golf, Fillmore. Really? Is that so? Vallejo, I don't want to do this. Hey, we need you. As of now, you're undercover. I don't want to see you in this office for the next two weeks. You practice. You could have asked me how I felt about it before you put me up for the gig, Ingrid. You've never turned down an undercover job before. What is it about this one that's so rough? Look, it doesn't matter. Vallejo says I have to represent, so I will. End of story, all right? No, Fillmore. There's more to this story. What is it with you and mini-golf? That's my business. Oh, didn't know I was dealing with tortured Fillmore today. My mistake. It's cool. Late. Act Two, The Obstacle of Memory. It went in. Oh, Farrell. Man, what are you doing here? The very future of X Middle School mini golf is at stake. You need to do well. You need Caddy O'Farrell and his magic bag of puttery. Danny, I've been training for two weeks. Two I weeks? Wow. I've been training my whole life. This graphite putter is specifically excellent for bank shots. This quenchade is mango onyx ice, your favorite. This towel has a 400 thread count, maximum softness and absorption. Don't mess with me, baby, I'm the best. Oh, Farrell. Fillmore, it's my dream. Toss me the quenchade. <laughs> Happy now. Boom yeah, boo yeah, hiya, hello. I'm Chris Minnesota, and this is the X Middle School Open a two-day affair to ferret out the greatest mini-golfer in our fair school. And leading off the unranked, unseated players is Cornelius Buenavista. Now the key to this hole, avoiding the pendulum. My haiku for hole one. The green, flat and quick. True follow-through is the key. Confident ball, clunk.
The vibes on this putter mock windmills. Send it home, brother. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. Buena Vista has dropped his putter. Oh, a smart move by Buena Vista. He felt the rain coming and saved his putt for a drier time, which will hopefully be tomorrow when we pick up where we left off with the X Middle School Open. Smooth move with the H2O, see? I'm headed in. Wet tweed smells like dog. May we converse? Converse away, baby. The gentleman to whom I am an employee congratulates you on your surprising performance. He has a proposition for you. Keep talking. He would like you to intentionally lose the tournament. That's so. You'll be rewarded handsomely. Plus, if you cooperate, there won't have to be any unpleasantness. You give me a sit down with the gentleman to which you are an employee, and I'll see what I can do. Impossible. That's my number. You want me to take a powder? You make it possible. Did you hear that? Yes. Yes, I did. I got a call from one of your boys. Told me to meet you here. I'm glad you understand the secrecy that I require for these communications. Let's just get to it. Let me ask you this. Are you with us in this endeavor? Why don't you explain it to me? You'll back off. Let others win. And there won't have to be any unpleasantness? Four. Freeze! Ex Middle School Safety Patrol! We're bringing you down. No more threatening people to take a fall. Who's threatening? I'm Ham Beaumont, president of the Mini Golf Happy Squad. The Mini Golf Happy Squad? They organize volunteer mini golfers to play rounds with the elderly. I received an anonymous phone call that Mr. Buena Vista's whooping all the senior citizens. I was just meeting him to suggest he back off and let others win. I had no idea it was so wrong. <laughs> Officer Fillmore? Cuzzy? Listen, I just wanted to tell you... Who's behind the corruption on the ex-middle school mini-golf tour? We'll go ahead, Cuzzy. Please tell us. We're all waiting. Cuzzy, come on. I didn't think so. Do you really think whoever that person is got this far being sloppy? I wouldn't tangle with him, officers. He'll crush you. Of course, I don't know how much will be left after Falsam gets through with you. Ham is her nephew. Anyway, have a nice day. Cuzzy, aren't you leaving too? What's your game, Biggie? Oh, no game, officer. I'm just a fan. Act three, three strokes to redemption. Silence! Uh, we weren't talking. Hmm, you weren't talking. My anger was displaced. It's as if it needs a proper channel to be fully expressed. Let's see. Oh, right, the reason you're here. Ham. Ham is my nephew. Ham is the kid you traumatized! Effective immediately, the safety patrol is to suspend its mini-golf investigation. I blew it. You blew it? I could have pressed Ham to say what he meant. I'm gonna skip the after school shift and head home. If you wanna talk, you're not gonna wanna talk. How'd it go? Oh, much worse than badly. Folsom closed the case. That's it. We lose. Well, about that guy, Biggie, we did a little research. He's a seventh grader. Cocky. Thinks a lot of himself. Supposedly, he has the largest comic book collection in the school, and it's getting bigger all the time. According to the local comic store, his comic book bag, board, and box purchases have spiked after every major ex-middle school mini-golf tourney. Why? Because he's running comic book bets. He buys the supplies for all the books he wins. 
Word on the street is, if you want to bet comics, he's the one to see. Even though he's been rigging the ex-middle school mini golf circuit so he never loses. And with Buena Vista out of the way, Biggie's put his whole fortune out on bets. And it looks like he's gonna win big. Great. I feel your pain, Ingrid. I too have had my hopes dashed. Why, with my superior caddying and Fillmore's adequate play, we could have won the Open. What? Talk. I'll start. So Biggie's behind it all. He makes his bets and rigs the matches. And now we can't touch him. Oh, we can do more than touch him. We can stop him. How? Folsom closed the case. The case is closed, but the Open's open. What? The second day of the ex-middle school Open kicks off tomorrow. And it's your putt. Biggie has his fortune out on comic book bets all over town. If you win the Open, Fillmore, Biggie loses everything. I can't do it. Why? Remember what you told Cuzzy? If something's wrong, the only way to make it right is to talk about it. Well, Cuzzy chose to quit instead. He punked out. Just like you. I'll see you later, Fillmore, because I know I won't talk to you later. Ingrid. These notches are six people's lives I've ruined. It was in sixth grade, back when I was a delinquent. I had always been good at mini golf, and I decided to throw in with the school team. But because of my little discipline problems, I wasn't even allowed to try out. Since they didn't let me try out, I decided to stamp them out. All of them. I challenged the whole team to a match, betting each one of them everything they had. CDs, video games, their trophies, you name it. It wasn't about the swag. I only had one thing on my mind, destroying their game. Ingrid. Mini golf is 100% mental. I played the holes to break them. I made it look like the greens broke differently. I swung my arm slow but hit fast. It made it look like the windmill was standing still. They didn't know what hit them. I beat them so badly, so completely. It's like there was nothing of them left. I took them out. They never played the game again. And until this case, neither had I. Fillmore, that was a long time ago. You did something harsh, and it hurts. That's how you're paying the price for it. But don't make other people pay that price. You are the only one that can take Biggie down. You're the only one who can stop him. You don't, and you might as well put some notches in that putter for all of us. Greetings, golf heads, and welcome to this, the second and final day of the X Middle School Open. Ah, <sighs> there's nothing sweeter than a hot, fresh churro with powdered sugar. Save, perhaps, winning a mint copy of the U Man's number 76 off some poor sap. <gasps> Who dares? You okay, man? You look white as a sheep. <sighs> what are you doing at the Open, Fillmore? I've heard the case is closed. Oh, I'm not here as a safety patroller, Biggie. I'm here as a player. Now tell me this. <laughs> you think that makes me less dangerous or more dangerous? See you on the greens, baby. This is it. Buena Vista is but one stroke behind Chilton. If he can catch an eagle, Buena Vista completes the mini golf upset of the century. But he has the 18th hole to contend with, a hole known only as the Vert Green. So treacherous, golfers are required to wear a helmet. Big finish, see? Don't just go for the match-winning eagle. Go for something special. Backspin, see? Put on a show, and that will lead you to redemption, brother. Quenchade? You're about to be permanently put out of business, 
Why are you smiling? I was thinking about you. Hey, what are you- An authorized replica of Torellian handcuffs, the strongest in the galaxy. But this is an official match. There aren't any do-overs. If, say, you shouted and broke Fillmore's concentration, well, that would be just too bad. Or if, say, a person at the snack bar got careless with a chutney at the exact same time someone on the street blared an air horn. Crackers. entered the open under false pretenses, and his name isn't even Buena Vista. He's a safety patroller. Biggie Clement has been bribing, or in my case, threatening other golfers to lose to Ian. Fillmore joined the tour to stop him, and he has. Fillmore didn't just win the open. He saved the open. He did something. And it's time that I do the same thing. How many of you good people want to help me escort Biggie back to Safety Patrol HQ? <laughs> Hey, those Tyrolians make great cuffs, don't they? What are all you guys doing here? We all got a call from some girl named Ingrid. She told each of us to meet here to pick up something we lost. What is this about? It's about me being sorry, Simon. Elmore? Here's everything I want off you guys. With interest. What do you want from us? A chance to make things right. That it may be a game. A game? Just for fun? Yeah, man. <laughs> Just for fun. gaming service that lets you play the Disney Channel way. Studio Disney in association with Capital Disney, 100% kids radio. Yes, it's true, you know, the mailbox is full, so stop texting in. Right, if you're watching 30 minutes ago, you would have seen this statement. Let's take a look. The statement said, after years of great eating, it's diet time for Sam. At 34 pounds, he's Britain's fattest something. Okay, let's take a look at some of your answers. I've got pig hair from Matilda in London. Wrong answer. I've got horse hair from Sarah in Norwich. Wrong answer. And I've got man hair, the obvious choice, from Billy in Nottingham. They are all the wrong answers. Let's take a look at the correct answer. The correct answer, of course, was... Dun, 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 cat. No! Cats, of course! And the person who got it right was... Are you ready? Drum roll, please. Dun, da, da, da. It was Lisa Bernardo! Well done! You have won the exclusive Disney Channel goodie bag. We're going to throw in all those goodies for you as well. Well done, Lisa. Fantastic. Now, if you didn't get a chance to play What Comes Text today, it doesn't matter because we will be playing it very, very soon. Now it's time to get something off your chest. 
Yes, it's time to get things off your chest. Give us a call, 0879-2020, and that's exactly what Alex did. Hi, Alex. Hiya. Hi, Hiya, matey. All right. Get it off your chest. Yeah, it's, um, we, at school, we've been studying about, um, litter, and we went on a litter, um, tally chart quest, and we saw, like, 60 cigarette butts just over the Great Line. And I just like to say how annoying it is that people don't care about our, um, um, environment. Yeah, I quite agree. Little outs beware. Put things in the bin. That's what they're there for. Absolutely. We did quite a good phoning on it last week, didn't we? Being helpful with the environment and stuff. But yeah, keep up the good work. Alex, keep your calls coming in if you want to get it off your chest as well. Right now, though, it's like family. <laughs> jerk-like behavior. Fine! If that's what you guys think of me, then I am out of here! Gee, what was that? That was Spinelli in a bad mood, Gus. It's never pretty, but she always calms herself down eventually. How? Usually by breaking stuff. Oh. Stupid, lousy, rotten basketball with that stupid, lousy, rotten rule! Will you stop that, Spinelli? Why should I? Because if you don't, I got Finster's pager number on speed dial. Fine! Looks like someone got up on the wrong side of the cage this morning. <laughs> How's a kid supposed to blow up a little steam around this joint? Hey, Ashley, hey, something has a crush on you. Uh, excuse me, Spinelli. You're about to smush my chalk. Your chalk? Oh, take it. I'm out of here anyway. Thank you. I need to wait to make the whiskers on my kitty. Kitty? What kitty? kitty I'm drawing on the blacktop. Isn't it neat? You call that a kitty? It doesn't even have any ears. Oh, yeah. Plus, you got its eyes all wrong. And its tail needs to go up like this. See? Wow, that's great. Thanks, Spinelli. And then you can give it big pointy fangs like this. See? And razor sharp claws. Then you make it your own. Like this. See? Uh, Spinelli? And then you need to add some more over here. Spinelli? And a little bit more over here. And get big. Big like this. Ah, Third Street. Another day, another dollop of knowledge. I gotta see if the gum I left on the jungle gym kept its flavor overnight. Wait for me! I wonder where Spinelli is this morning. I hope she's in a better mood than yesterday. <laughs> you can say that again. Excuse me, mister. I wouldn't walk there if I were you. You might smear the nice picture. Picture? Whoa, what's with the crazy designs? I just asked her to help me draw a kitty, but she wouldn't stop. A little more over here. Have a more over here. Spinelli, what are you doing? More over here and some over here. She seems to be entranced. Drawing some. Yeah, but what? Guys! Guys! You gotta see this! This better be good, Gus. Spinelli's doing something strange down there. Strange and wonderful. Look! Whoa! It's beautiful. How was for 
resembles one of those giant aboriginal petroglyphs that can only be seen from the sky. It's a masterpiece that touches the soul and makes one cry to the heavens. Arch, thy name is Spinelli. Yeah, but I wonder what it's supposed to be. I don't know, Gus, but whatever it is, Spinelli sure worked hard to make it. And it's too bad those digger boys are gonna mess it all up. What? She's right! Come on, we gotta stop them! Sam, Dave, wait! You guys gotta stop digging! Huh? What are you talking about, TJ? You guys gotta dig somewhere else today! We've been digging where we want on this playground ever since we were in kindergarten. Why should we dig somewhere else now? Come with us, and we'll show you. I feel inspired. Yeah, inspired to dig. For chalk! An excellent idea, guys. At our current rate, Spinelli will consume the school's entire chalk supply within the hour. We better get digging, then. See ya! I gotta hand it to you, Teach. You sure saved Spinelli's drawing. Hey, when it comes to dealing with diggers, I'm the man. How are you at dealing with fifth graders? <gasps> Let's get this game started already! Somebody stop those bad men! Let's go! And here I'll add some blue, and then some green. Uh -huh. After what Spinelli did to me yesterday, why shouldn't I play basketball over stupid chalk squiggles? One very good reason, Lawson. Follow me. It makes me feel things I've never felt before. I could never play basketball in that, Lawson. It's too pretty. Yeah. Okay, Teach, we stop the diggers, we stop Lawson. But face it, sooner or later, somebody's gonna mess up Spinelli's drawing. What are we gonna do? Bring every kid on the playground up here? Guess, my friend, that's not a bad idea. Yeah. One at a time, people. No pushing. All get a turn to see Spinelli's thing. Come on. You can do it. Just a few steps. No, I won't do it. You can't make me. Why, this isn't a trick at all. It's, it's art. Wow. <laughs> no, when these two do, should we like it? I mean, it is Spinelli. True, but it does pick up the pink in your sweater. Scandalous. I got limited editions of the artist's early work. Doodles from yesterday's math class. A threatening note signed by the artist herself. Easy there, art lovers. Everyone's gonna get a turn here. Next. Hey, you guys don't go to our school. Of course not. We attend SCUMA. The School of Modern Alternative Art. We have come to view the so-called Action Chalk Girl in action. What's going on here? This is a playground. Why isn't anyone playing? We can't, Miss Finster. Spinelli's drawing this amazing stuff all over the asphalt and... No graffiti, huh? Well, I'll fix that. Randall, tell Hank to get out the hose. But, Miss Finster, you don't understand. Oh, I understand plenty. That's why I'm gonna wash this mess off the blacktop right now. What? Uh, you can't do that. Please, Miss Finster, leave it be. As Oscar Wilde once said, art schools should be the streets. And, well, the playground is sort of like a street, only with play equipment and no traffic. Spinelli's work is a breathtaking expression of vital spiritual needs. It brings up all kinds of feelings and stuff. Any unauthorized drawing on school grounds is officially classified as graffiti. And I'm cleaning it off once and for all. <laughs> now what are we gonna do, TJ? There's only one thing we can do. Gondor Primuline. Gondor Primuline. Gondor Primuline. It's JT, Code Epsilon. Gondor Primuline, JT. What's the trouble? We got an emergency situation on the playground, guys. We need your help. We'll get out the bird and take a look. Geosynchronous satellite online. Track longitude at 80 degrees west. Latitude at 40.4 degrees north. Extrapolating. Closer, closer. <gasps> A most impressive piece of work, JT. And Finster's trying to wash it off. Fear not, JT. We're online and on the case. Thanks, guys. But hurry. Hurry! You needed something hosed down, Muriel? That's right, Hank. Wash it off. Gosh, Muriel, are you sure? It's an awfully nice piece of work. If you're gonna whip out on me, Hank, just give me the hose and I'll do it myself. Sorry, Muriel. You're not authorized to operate a hose this powerful. Union rules. Give me the hose, Hank. Now's your chance. For beauty. For art. For spaghetti! Decoupage, colored decoupage, a chairwoman of the American Arts Endowment. Oh, I just saw this tremendous work of art on the internet. 
Way to go, Kidarf! Well, that's not art, that's graffiti! Au oh, contraire! This is one of the most original pieces of art I've seen in years. In fact, the endowment wants to offer this artist a grant and declare this entire black top a protected public installation. Yeah! What? You can't do that! This is my black top, sister! It's not black top, it's art! Black top! Art! Black top! Art! What do you know about art? Mm -hmm. Who the heck do you want to Done. Quick! To the jungle gym! It's incredible. It's magnificent. And to think I wanted to wash it away. Why, we should laminate the whole blacktop. I hereby declare that Spinelli's masterpiece be preserved for future generations. Yeah! Excuse me, but I hear something rattling. Balls! It's gonna blow! The drawing, it's gone. Oh, gone! Why, great god of the arts, why? Hey, what's everybody looking at? You're a ruined masterpiece, Spinelli. I'm so sorry. Masterpiece? What masterpiece? The vast expanse of blacktop you spent the better part of two days laboring over. You mean that drawing? That was just something I was doing because it helped me feel better. Doing it was the fun part. If it's gone, it's gone. <laughs> hey, anybody up for a playground-wide game of battle tag? I'm it! <laughs> goes the art, and there goes the true artiste. All right, okay, everybody, mass groundings. You're not the boss of me. <laughs> oh, you mean those two? That's cool. What a tool. New series, new faces, same rules. Eight simple rules, Monday the 4th of October, only on the Disney Channel. Six on a Monday. There's two things I like at quarter past six on a Monday. What's that? One of them is a fish finger sandwich. Oh, nice one. A bit of vinegar, it. tomato Go sauce. Goes well, Shin. The other one is I like to know what's coming up on the movies on Studio Disney. Well, yeah, it's funny you should say that because is right it? at this very spot we're going to find out. We are. Yeah. Oh, we've done it, guys. We freed the clowns. I didn't know a codfish could talk. Did you, Tinkerbell? Blast him! <laughs> Take your best shot, Captain. Time to release confetti. Confetti? I thought you said... Mother Willow, I need to speak with you. Radio now. Yes. Oh, some great movies there to look forward to, especially tonight's scene double. Now that we've got Grace on the phone. Hello, Grace. Hello. Hello, lovely. Hi, Get Grace. it off your chest. Okay, what really bugs me is the weather where I live. The weatherman said we would have a late summer, but we had um, sleep two days ago. It has the weather been has bad. been awful. I can't actually remember a nice day. It seems so far <laughs> away, doesn't it, Grace? I know, it's horrible. I know. And it's... we know it's all downhill now as we head into winter. Oh, yeah. <sighs> Never mind, you've got it off your chest. Here's the White Family, part two. Happy Monday morning and welcome to the kickoff assembly for our annual science fair. Here to introduce the theme of this year's event is the winner of the last three science fairs in a row, Miss Gretchen Grudler. Thank you, fellow students. It is an honor to announce this year's science fair theme to help mankind. For 
you see, science is not merely a fun and exciting means of expending your leisure time. It's also a tool to improve the world. How, you may ask? Simply devise an experiment that uses science to help others and you'll discover the answer. And remember, turn in your applications by Thursday night or you won't be allowed to participate. Now, good luck and good science. Man, Gretz, that speech was wampadelic. Why, thank you, guys. My goal was to inspire unique and thoughtful projects. Well, you sure inspired me. That's why I'm doing the same unique and thoughtful project I do every year. Volcano. 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 Gusatoa. Vesuvius. Mount St. Mikey. Volcano. Volcano. Gretchen. Volcano. Don't even ask, Gus. Gretchen's projects are always top secret. Well, science waits for no kid. Come on, guys. We got fake stuff to make. Happy pyroclastics. Ah, oh, the joy of inspiring one's comrades. Oh, excuse me, I didn't see you there. Uh, no, excuse me, Gretchen. I'm sorry, do I know you? No, but I know you. At least, I know all about you. I was hoping you could sign my Young Genius Girl magazine. Just make it out to Becky Benson. I didn't realize there was anyone else in the school who read this magazine. Well, I don't understand some of the more complicated articles, but like I always say, the best way to get ahead is to reach beyond your understanding. What a refreshing philosophy. One which leads me to ask you another favor. I seem to have reached beyond my understanding on my science project, and I was hoping you could possibly offer me some pointers. Well, I have a lot of work to do, but... Oh, why not? I mean, if I'm going to help mankind, I might as well start by helping you. Oh, Gretchen, you have a heart as big as your brain. Here's your problem, Becky. Your negative wire shorts out where it touches the metal clip. Oh, we simply reposition the wire, and... Voila! You know, making a crank generator is quite an impressive project for a second grader. But connecting it to a Princess Polly's Magic Fun Tierra is simply inspired. Even a girl who can't afford batteries deserves to feel like a princess. You remind me a little of myself at your age. You know, it's my dream to win the science fair, just like you. Tell you what, Becky, since your project is all finished, how would you like to help me finish mine? Do you mean it? Absolutely. May I take notes? I recommend it. To science? To science! My volcano was painted green in honor of my favorite team, the Panthers. Well, my volcano dramatically recreates the eruption that helped us defeat the British at Bunker Hill. I've written a verse to my creation. O volcano mighty mound, behold the products of thy molten fount. Impressive, very impressive. So it sends me to blow you all away with... Mount TJ. Whoa. Rising from the mists on the island of busted shipwrecks. One day, boom, crack a slam. Who alone survives? Just one lost kid and his fun-loving monkey sidekick. That, my friends, is what volcanoes are all about. Cool. Awesome. The finest volcano ever fashioned by the hand of kids. Think so, do ya? Well, does it blow up with terrifying sounds of destruction and a doomsday shower of life like molten lava substitute? Or does it just fizz up with a lame foam of vinegar and baking soda? That's what I thought. Behold, Mount Nightmare, Third Street's first ever battery-operated volcano of doom. Any of you boys want to rethink your own plans? I might be willing to help. Well, this is where the magic happens. In Hank's janitor shed? Wow. And this is my baby. Project 6479235. What a beautiful name. Is it done? Not quite. There's still one missing ingredient. The help of a friend. dress rehearsal. On the count of three, hook up your batteries and say your prayers. One, two, three! Here it is, Third Street's very first working solar power generator. At 600 megawatts, could really pump some wicked juice into a stadium folk music retrospective. So, are we finished? I just need to do a few minor tests to make sure it's working properly. I can't thank you enough, Gretchen. This has been a most... Oh my goodness! What's the matter, Becky? Your science fair application. I just found it on the floor. Egan! I was having so much fun that I forgot all about it. I'm sure Miss Lemon is still in her office. I'll just head over there right now and turn it in. Not to worry. I can turn in both of our applications on my way home. Oh, Becky, would you? It would be my pleasure. And hey, tomorrow's the big day, so get some sleep. I'll see you bright and early. Oh, I'll be there. Good morning, Menlo. Good morning.
morning, Gretchen. Here early as always, I see. Who could sleep in on Science Fair Day? Indeed. Here to watch, then? I'm afraid I don't understand. Well, you never turned in your application, and you crossed your name off the sign-up list. I what? Quite noble of you to step aside. By the way, you should take a look inside. Little Becky Benson setting up a project that would have given even you a run for your money. Little Becky? <gasps> oh, hello, Gretchen. Becky, I'm confused. You told me you were handing in my application, but my name was crossed off the sign-up list. And you copied my project? I told you I wanted to win the science fair. I didn't think you meant this year. I... I trusted you! Oh, come on, Gretchen. You always win. What am I supposed to do? Wait until you graduate? Besides, ever since kindergarten, all I've ever dreamed about is a first-place science fair trophy. There's nothing in school that compares to it. You, of all people, can understand that. I understand a lot of things. But this... I don't understand this at all! Since our volcanoes weren't blowing up, we did some research and decided to join them all together in a great ring of fire, just like in nature. All we had to do was move up to a slightly bigger battery. Little children and pregnant women, you might want to leave the room. Where's Gretchen Grundler's project? Yes, we want to see Gretchen's. Well, I'm afraid Miss Grundler pulled out of the competition this year. But wait till you see little Becky Benson. She looks to be the Gretchen Grundler of tomorrow. Gretchen not in the science fair? Say it ain't so! Gretchen, what are you doing in here? Oh, nothing. Just building a robotic sidekick that won't steal my ideas and betray me. Hi, I'm Tammy, and I'm honest. You mean that little runt out there stole your science project? You can't let her get away with this, Gretchen. You gotta go out there and tell those judges the truth. Oh, what's the point? I trusted her, guys. I trusted her, and she stole from me. Come on, Gretchen. You can't give up. I mean... Did Albert Edison give up when they stole his theory of regularity? Did Benjamin Franklin give up when the Germans shot down his kite? No. And why? Because they were great scientists. And when you're great, you don't let other guys walk all over you. You stand up and say, that's my really cool science project you guys are going gaga -ga over. You know, TJ, in some strange, bizarre way, you've made some sense. Come on, we've got to stop that little thief before it's too late. And so, at 600 megawatts, it could really pump some wicked juice into a stadium folk music retrospective. <laughs> yes, that's true. This is one of the most impressive science projects I've seen in years. Just answer one question, Becky. How does it work? Did you say, how does it work? Well, uh, you see, um... She doesn't know the answer! What it does is, uh, uh... I'll tell you what it does. Gretchen, what are you doing here? I'm here to... to... I mean... What Becky is trying to explain here is that these panels contain photovoltaic cells which create an electric current when struck by photons of light. Becky was discussing this with me earlier. Becky, you should be very proud of yourself. We'll announce our decision in a moment. You... you could have destroyed me. Frankly, Becky, that was my intention. But then I realized that the experimental question here is not whether I should demand what is right, but whether you will do what is right. So, Becky, if all you want is a trophy, by all means, take it. But if you learn something more, well, I'll be in the audience, collecting my data. I am proud to announce the winner of Third Street's annual science fair, Little Becky Benson. Thank you, Principal Brickley. Judges, this is a great honor for me, and... Well, the fact is... I can't accept this award since I, well, I stole my project from Gretchen Grunler. <gasps> All I ever wanted was to be just like her, to be as smart as her, to be as looked up to as her. But now I realize it's not just because she's smart and wins lots of awards that Gretchen is looked up to. It's also because she knows how to be a good friend. Someday I hope I will too. Here you are, sir. But, but then who's going to be our winner? Look out! They're gonna blow! Oh, well, I guess the award goes to Detweiler and his friends. To science? To science.
just read to Disney Channel Play, the new interactive gaming service that lets you play the Disney Channel way. Studio Disney, in association with Capital Disney, 100% Kids Radio. The mailbox is full. Thank you if you took part this afternoon in What Comes Text. The question that I asked a short while ago was as follows. 7,000 Germans got into the record books by building a 1,235 metre long something. I so wanted the answer to be Himalayan mountain goat, but unfortunately it wasn't. Uh, toothpick, uh, says Tony. Unfortunately, that's wrong, Tony. Thank you. Vivian got in touch with us. You know, I think you're the first Vivian to ever get in touch. Uh, table, says Vivian. Wrong answer. Uh, and Danny says uh, bridge. I'm afraid that's the wrong answer. This is the answer we were looking for. It is, believe it or not, a jigsaw. No. That's right. No. It's still a puzzle to me. And that's from Kate Rothwell in Omskirk. Well done to you, my friend. You are the winner of today's What Comes Text. Thousands of years to play. The quest, going from one to the treasure chest. Do you find me scary? Challenge! And when you want me to hit, just shout, hit! Hit! Hit it! Okay! Double 20 if you want to play Dave the Board Game this afternoon. Absolute madness. Just call for Highs and Wise as well. Oh, it's 7920 Double 20. Same number, but different thing. It's Highs and Wise we do now. We've got Molly on the phone. Hello, Molly. Hello. Hello, Mad Molly. Who would you like to say hello to? <laughs> Lauren. Oh, yeah, and why is that? Because she's helping me with my homework. Oh, love Lauren for that. What well, homework good. is it, Molly? Pardon? Which homework is it? Um, like schoolwork. Oh, just, okay. school, just general schoolwork. Yeah. Yes, good stuff. Right now, he's like family. If he doesn't make it, I get to lie down on the way to school. <laughs> Anybody know if Nebulon's going to school today? Who's Nebulon? <laughs> uh, Doak, let's roll. <laughs> what in the name of... Yes! And Nebulon makes it by the skin of his antenna. Dorks, could we let go, please? We're wasting valuable pre-class mirror time. Show off! Sit down, Nebulon. We're gonna be late. <sighs> Thanks for waiting, Mr. Doppler. Those clues! Hey, they got a bike. Looks like a new kid's moving in. Some kid's moving to Intrepidville? Poor dumb sucker. <laughs> The indigenous peoples of Zlornap 7 leave no part of the slain Zizix beast unused. This ribcage was used by the Moon Egg tribe as a pasta strainer <coughs> during... What's that? Um, yes, hello. My name is Marvel Bugglethweet. I'm new. He is like a total nerd. That is so hilarious and weird. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you bone bags, pipe down. District HQ says to make new students feel welcome. So stop snickering about what a freak you think Larval is, and someone volunteer to show the kid around the school. Anyone? 
Nebula! Yes, Mrs. Bolt? Seems to me you could use a little extra responsibility, comic book boy. Larval, meet Lloyd Nebulon. He'll be your Luna Vista tour buddy for the week. Nebulon's a tour buddy! <laughs> oh, man, why me? If I heard Mrs. Bolt right, it was because you were reading comics in class. Hey, guys! Lloyd, my man, there you are. Uh, <laughs> where's your youthful ward, Larval? You mean Slime Boy? I accidentally lost him in the crowd when the bell rang. Lloyd? Ah! You dropped this back there in the hall. I shouted for you to stop, but I guess you didn't hear. Hey, my lucky pencil! I once got a bee using this baby. Thanks, Larval. That was real nice. Aw, uh, the least I could do. I mean, heck, you volunteered to show me around and all. Yeah, volunteered. Hey, these are the guys. Eddie, Kurt, and Douglas. The buddies of my tour buddy are my tour buddy buddies. <laughs> yeah, that's a real humdinger. Excuse us, we're just gonna go over here. Quick, Lloyd, toss the pencil across the room. When Nerville goes to fetch it, we'll ditch him for good. Nah, I don't want to be a total huge jerk. I'm stuck with the kid for a week. I might as well try to make the best of it. Okay, Larval, if I'm gonna be your tour buddy, I guess we might as well get started. Righteous Amigo! Luna Vista lesson number one. Never say righteous, Amigo. Oh, check. Luna Vista lesson two. Lunch. There are some things every kid has to know about the cafeteria food. The pulp gourd pie is decent, the tendril dogs are edible, but steer clear the potatoes al zork. Way too slimy. Uh, no offense. None taken, but I won't actually be eating lunch. <laughs> what did he say? Um, did you have a big breakfast or something? N no, no, it's just that I'm gonna wait till I get home from school to eat, that's all. Out with it, Larvie. What are you hiding? Mm, you guys will make fun of me. Come on, Larval. You can level with me. I am your tour buddy. I'll tell you if you promise not to let it get around school. It's kind of embarrassing. Ooh, sounds juicy. Is there somewhere private we could go? Here we go, Larval. The holographic janitor closet. Gee, it doesn't seem terribly private. Hang on to your exoskeleton, Larvy. Show him the wall, Lloyd. Whoa! Cool, huh? Follow me. Holographic bricks. Won't hurt a bit. Let me adjust this thingy here. There, plenty of privacy. This is one heck of a utility closet. The janitors have a strong union. Okay, now what's this big lunch mystery? Kurt, could you hand me the tray? This is how I eat. <laughs> Ew! Larval, that was the most disgusting thing I have ever witnessed. I'm real sorry. Sorry nothing? That was awesome! You might be the coolest kid I ever met! You mean, you're not gonna laugh and point at me and call me Bile Boy or Spewasaurus? Certainly not. It's fascinating! Dissolving one's meal with sputum. It's pure biology in action! So, you guys are gonna keep my secret, right? Why would we share something that cool with those jerks out there? Larval, your secret's safe with us. We'll take scene on. Luna Vista lesson number three. Gym class. Getting picked last is just a fact of life. Get used to it. I always smuggle in a little light reading to pass the time. We'll take Lou. Lesson four. Library etiquette. In here, you either keep your voice down or incur the wrath of the librarian droid. Oh, come on, Lloyd. Don't scare the poor kid. That old bat sensors are so shy, she wouldn't know if the kid was... <laughs> <laughs> Lesson five. Girls, they're pretty, they're mysterious, and they'll have nothing to do with us. <laughs> he said what? <laughs> That's Brittany, queen of all girls. Be warned, she has been known to reduce boys to blithering idiots. Hey, blithering. He knows. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to tell you guys thanks. These first couple of days at Luna Vista have been a heck of a lot more fun than I expected them to be. Hey, man, for you and me both. I owe it all to you, Lloyd. Thanks, pal. See you guys. Bye. Bye. You know, Lloyd, I had my doubts, but you were right. That larval's A-OK. -okay. Yeah, he's swell, Lloyd. Hey, what can I say? I have a knack for knowing people. I took one look at larval and said to myself, that kid is going to be fun to have around. <laughs> 
the Edinator. You seen the Larvinator today? Simmer down, you skin tubes. I have a note from the office. Seems Larval's gonna be out sick for a few days. I need a volunteer to take his homework to him. Oh, oh, like, I'll do it, Mrs. Bolt. Oh, no, wait, I forgot. I'd rather, like, totally die. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Bolt, ma'am, my friends and I would be honored to take Larval his books. Yep. Of course. Why not? They're all tour buddies. <laughs> <laughs> Let them laugh. Okay, guys, Larval's place should be right about here. Yes, boys? Um, Mr. Bugglethwaite, we're friends of Larval's from school. We brought him his homework. And some chicken soup. How oh, nice. Come in, boys, come in. Here, let me take those. Larval would be so glad to have them. He's worried about falling behind. Mr. Bugglethwaite, is Larval here? I mean, can we see him? Yeah, he's not contagious, is he? Not at all, boys. You can all see him. He's right over there. <gasps> Sweet mother of Mufton! Our friend Larval is in a cocoon! I couldn't sleep all weekend! Every time I closed my eyes, I saw Larval squished up face in that freaky cocoon! I know, man. That was totally weird! But Mr. Bugglethwaite assured us that building a cocoon during pupation is completely natural for larval species. Yeah, it can't be that weird. I found a card for it at the card store. <clears throat> It's nice to know that you have spun your very own cocoon. Here's wishing you a happy molt and hope you'll get well soon. To a wonderful grandson? There wasn't a big selection. Good morning, you sentient sausage casings. I hope you had a relaxing weekend filled with homework. Uh, excuse me, Mrs. Bolt. Sorry I'm late. Oh, why, that's no problem at all. Seeing as how I have no idea who the heck you are. Well, ma'am, um, I'm Marvel. But that's, like, impossible. Larval is fun me to look at, and this boy is fun to look at. I don't have any urge to make up dorky names about this boy. Believe it or not, it's true. This boy is Larval Bugglethwaite. <gasps> Larval, what the heck happened to you? Well, you guys saw my cocoon, right? Boy, did we? Well, inside that thing, I was pupating. You know, changing into my next more mature life stage. It's an insectoid thing. It's really kind of embarrassing. Are you nuts? It's every guy's dream. I'd give anything to roll out of bed one morning and bam, I'm tall, good looking, and suddenly able to fly. They're not all slimy and disgusting anymore. Well, I don't see what difference it makes. I'm still the same old larval. Come on, we're gonna be late for gym class. Yeah, better hurry. Wouldn't want to miss getting picked last. And today we're gonna play us some saucer ball. And as usual, team captains will be Rodney Glaxer and, uh, hmm. Son, I'm not sure I've had the pleasure. Oh, I'm Larval, sir. Larval Bugglethwaite. Bugglethwaite, you say? You're quite a strapping specimen, son. You're our other team captain. M m m me sir Yes, you. You're magnificent. Better than the rest. Now, hustle on over there, son. We don't have all day. Uh, okay. I pick Chuck. Yes! Hmm. Well, I pick Lloyd. <gasps> what? What did he say? I'm confused. Move it, Lloyd. You got picked first. Monday, the 57th of Floontober. I'm going to remember this date forever. I cannot believe this day. I mean, first, I get picked first. With me, Kurt, and Dougie right behind you. And then our team won. And what could conservatively be termed a butt-kicking blowout? Yeah, that gym class was actually fun. Hey, guys. Oh, my gosh, Larva. Uh, we, uh, didn't realize this was your table, man. My table? Yeah, we'll just go eat over there. We can squeeze in with some lesser kids. Move it, Lou. Oh, and Larva? Yeah? You're an inspiration to all of us. Did you see those kids clear out? I'd say our lessons about how this place runs are really paying off. Um, excuse me, newly mutated boy? Y you mean me? Duh, I don't see anyone else around here, do you? Ouch. Me and my friends would like to invite you to join us at our table for light lunch and dance committee gossip. Wow, Brittany, that'd be amazing. Uh, can my friends join us too? We, like, barely have room for you. But I suppose there might be room at the next table over or whatever. Yes! The next table over! Oh, we may catch snippets of actual conversation! Lloyd, I sure am glad I talked you into making friends with that kid. He's turning out to be our one-way ticket to Excellentville. Oh, it's hey, hey, it's hey, Hi there. It was real nice of you guys to ask us to join you. It was nice of you to realize it was nice of us. Hey, so, bro, anyhow, come join I me. Gonna... I don't see any open seats. Do you? Nah, but that's okay. We can eat standing up. The point is, we made it. 
Wow, this moment is exactly like I dreamed it would be. Almost. Larvel, your team beat me and Ronnie's team bad in gym, dude. And you even picked Nebulon and his loser friends. I know, I know. I heard about it. Um, suddenly I'm ready to be back at our usual table. Way ahead of you, man. Durf! Now our table's gone. Oh, boy. I'm gonna have to be a table again, aren't I, guys? If you don't mind, Kurt. This ain't fair. Larval was our pal. We taught him everything he knows. Larval's still our pal, Eddie. You'll see. Ooh. Guys, watch the cutlery. Team captain, Rodney, Larval, uh, let's hustle it up. Ah, good old gym class. Saucer ball's never been my sport, but it's kind of growing on me. Hey, being a first-round draft choice does wonders for a guy's attitude. It's fun being picked by my name instead of, we'll take the big blue kid. Let's see, I pick Chuck. Huh? Um, all right, good pick, Larval, my man, good pick. Right, guys? Good pick. I'll take Jake. Let's see, I pick... Uh, hey, Coach, um, Chuck and I don't really need any more guys. We can pretty much beat any team of Rodney's, just the two of us. Just the two of you? Now that's a competitor. Those of you not picked by Rodney today will run left for the rest of the period. And then when Chuck suggested, you know, not picking anyone else, well, I just figured it'd be a good chance for you guys to rest up. I mean, I know Douglas has been itching to read in gym again. <gasps> and I had no idea Antonia would make you guys run laps. Honest. I certainly hope not. Laps make me lightheaded. To someone with this much head, that's never good. Forget it, guys. What we need is a big old radium shake from Zeptars. Yes, the food court. Perfect antidote to gym class. Ooh, sorry, guys, but I'll have to take a rain check. Brittany asked me over to help her with her homework this afternoon. What? If I was drinking something, I'd spit it all over myself right now. I don't know what it is, but when she asked me to do something, I kind of want to do it. Oh, I can yeah. see that. Of course. Oh, yeah, Understandable. So. Check you guys later. Question, fellows. Why would Brittany, a straight-A student, need help with homework? Maybe she doesn't really need his help, but she just wants to be with him, and she's using homework as an excuse to get together. <phone rings> ah, you're right. That's stupid. Where the heck is Larval? I dropped my pencil in the hall, bent down to pick it up. When I stood up, I lost him in the crowd. It happens. I'm looking for the guy, too. I gotta know what happened yesterday with Brittany. Hey, how you doing? Uh, I, I wasn't talking about you or prying into your personal business or nothing. Whatever. Look, I just thought you should know that Larvel has, like, totally outgrown you people. Larvel? Oh, that's the hip new name I made out of Larvel. It's cooler. Oh. In fact, Larvel's like, so cool and popular now that it really doesn't make sense for him to, you know, mingle with you four anymore. So, um, bug off, okay? What? No way! Yeah, we don't take orders from you. Look, dorknoids, I'm just passing along a message from Larvel. Now, if you'll excuse me, it's not doing me any good being seen with you either. I don't believe it for a moment! Larvel wouldn't diss us like that. Guys, we gotta talk to him. He's right over there. Larvel, there you are. We've been looking all over for you. Uh, well, I'm kind of busy right now, guys. Uh, how about if we hook up later? Busy waiting in line? Look, Larvel, we need to... Uh, Actually, I'm going by Larvel now. Yeah, okay, Larvel. Brittany just came by and told us to stay away from you. And she said it came from you. Isn't that like the craziest thing you ever heard? Isn't it? <sighs> Look, guys, here's the thing. I kind of did tell Brittany to say something like that to you. What? But that's well, just... You have to understand. A kid has an image to maintain. I can't be mingling with Brittany at lunch and then hanging out with guys like you. This can't be happening. Hey, it's nothing personal. Uh, excuse me, okay? Brittany's waiting. Did what I think just happened really happen? Shockingly enough, yes! We've been dumped! Boy, a boy! Look at him over there, hooting it up with Brittany and them. Oh, it disgusts me. Even more than his eating habits, which were never as cool as I pretended they were. The shallowness of the popular crowd never ceases to astonish. Mere days ago, they wouldn't give Larvel the time of day. And now they give him the time of day anytime he asks them. It ain't fair, I tell you. We put ourselves out for that creepy insect. And this is how he repays us? Oh, I wish we could cut that guy down to size. Hey, check it out. Larval may be hanging out with a whole new crowd, but it looks like he still eats the same old way. I suppose his new friends are less understanding of his quirks than we. <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute. Guys, 
Maybe it's time Larval's new pals found out who he really is. You're not thinking. Why not? This I gotta see. Hey, Brittany! What is it, Nebby Dork? Just thought you might like to get to know your new friend a little better. I give you the real Larval Buggle weight. <laughs> No, I... I don't... It's not the way it looks. Uh, uh, I am so sure. File boy, 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 file boy. Yeah! Lord, you got him, man. You got him good. Yeah, real good. Hey, any of you guys seen Larval around? Uh-uh. Nope. Nor have I. I'm worried about him. I mean, he's missed five days of school, including a test. Psst, Brittany, have you seen Larvelle lately? Who's Larvelle? All right, people, looks like we've got some seating changes to make. I just got word that our friend Larval won't be returning to school. So, Xenon, I want you to take his old seat. Inertia, won't I won't be returning? What have I done? Come in, it's open. Mr. Bugglethwaite? That's me. I'm looking for Larvel, sir. Larvel's gone. Gone? Oh, no, he can't be. I, I really need to apologize to him. Apologize? For what? See, I pulled a really bad prank on him a few days ago. And, well, I guess he was pretty upset. I haven't seen him since. Actually, Lloyd, that's not the reason I left school. You left school? I... I don't... It's me, Lloyd. I used to be Larvel. I've undergone another metamorphosis. I'm a regular old adult now, and I'm back to using the name Larvel. Larvel seems so immature. Man, you insect guys grow up quick. We sure do. Speedy metabolism, fast maturity, all that. Our lifespan is limited, but when you realize it means only a few weeks of middle school, well, it's definitely worth the trade-off. So I guess I made my apology to the right guy after all. And I accept it. <laughs> that was one excellent prank. And now, I'd like to apologize, too. For what? I'm older now, Lloyd, and a bit wiser. When I look back at those days, I can see things in a different light. I was a real jerk to you guys, ditching you for the popular kids the way I did. It was, well, a perfidious thing to do. per what Um, <laughs> crummy, lousy, lame. Oh, yeah. At the time, it seemed like I had no choice but to do whatever it took to click with Brittany and the others. Suddenly, the most popular kids in school were talking to me, asking me what I thought and felt. It was thrilling, almost intoxicating. That's not an excuse, mind you, just a reason. A pretty good reason. Not really. So I guess we both had some growing up to do, huh? Looks like you did it a little quicker than me. Oh, I don't know about that. You were mature enough to come apologize. That's pretty impressive. You think so? Really? That shows real character. When you're ready to join the workforce, look me up. Wow, thanks. Hey, what did you grow up to be anyway? Oh, I'm in mergers and acquisitions, specializing in biotech. Sounds kind of boring. It is. Be glad you've got a few years of being a kid left to go. I just have one question. Oh, what's that? Well, when you went to Britney's after school that one time, did you two... I mean, were you... Oh, sorry, Lloyd. I'm an old man now. My memory just isn't what it used to be. Oh, man. A gentle giant who'd do anything to get out of fighting evil is coming next on Disney Cinemagic is the one and only Dave the Barbarian. Global espionage, you've got to stay one step ahead. You think you could be the next Kim Possible? Got what it takes to be a Daredevil secret agent. Are you a super spy who can hunt down the villains of the underworld? Then listen up. Discover the brand new weekend episodes of Kim Possible, and you could win undercover spy equipment in our top secret, highly confidential Kim competition. With four chances to win, watch the new weekend episodes of Kim Possible. Log on to DisneyChannel.co.uk or digital 7.1.
satellite viewers can press red, then answer a new question each weekend. Yes! Good! You can save the world just like Kim. Watch new undercover episodes of Kim Possible each weekend for your chance to win. This weekend at 10.35, only on the Disney Channel. You got the dummy? He's wearing a tie. <laughs> Aren't you a little old to be playing with dolls? Aren't you a little old? New series, new faces, same rules. Eight simple rules. Monday the 4th of October, only on the Disney Channel. Imagine you're Peter Pan. I'm not, I'm not your Okay, but imagine you're Peter oh, Pan. Right, you've okay. been away for a couple of weeks. Yeah. It's the first time you've come back home. You're sat on a sofa. What's the first thing you want to do? Have a cup of tea. Not have a cup of tea. I think it would be Return to Neverland. Oh, right. Yes. That's a nice movie. It is. Let's see what you've done there. Good. Brilliant. <laughs> I didn't know a codfish could talk. Did you, Tinkerbell? Blast him! <laughs> Take your best shot, Captain. To release confetti. Confetti? I thought you said. <laughs> Grandmother Willow, I need to speak with you. to anybody and let us know why give us a call right now it's 087920 0002 i'm getting quite nervous with you swinging that conker i'm sorry i've lost nine we need to have a little match later on don't we we've got um charlotte on the line hello charlotte hello hello lovely who would like to say hello to my best friend hannah your best mate hannah and why is that because she moved away to devon and i've lost her telephone number oh you're joking oh. So is this a plea out to Hannah then, Charlotte? Yeah. Let's hope that Hannah's watching. Hannah, if you're watching Charlotte in Epsom, she's lost your number. You've got to get in touch with her. And if you've lost hers and just contact us, we'll put you two back together. We will. <laughs> Keep your highs and lows coming in. Here's like family part two. Hi, we're on a roller coaster right at the top. A roller coaster is a simple machine. Actually, it's a group of simple machines. Yeah, we got ramps, we got pulleys, we got wheels all working together. Ha ha! Come on! Bill Nye, the science guy. Inertia is a property of matter. T minus seven seconds. Do you realize the same scientific principles that let us lift things with our arms and reach for things help us rev race cars up? They let us get things off the ground. We're talking about machines. Simple machines, uh, like wheels. See, wheels on cars let cars go this way while the road's going that way. So wheels, pulleys, ramps, and ropes all help make our work easier. Simple machines let us change the size and direction of forces. Uh, they're machines. They're simple. They're everywhere. So take a look at this. It's a pulley. And there's another one on the ceiling. When I pull down on this rope, the wooden crate of science goes up. See? The pulley is changing the direction of the force. Let's tie this off now. There you go. Now let's say we want to move something, like this plastic water bottle. We want to take it to the other side of the lab. Well, we can use a simple machine. This is a catapult. It's a lever. Same thing. You ready? Three, two, one. That's 
the way we always do it. See, this is a lever. Careful. See, it's a lever. There's weights on this end, and this end, that's where the bottle went. So the weight goes down, and the bottle goes up. Levers allow us to change the size and direction of forces. And the key is in the middle. This is the pivot, or fulcrum, of the lever. Allows this end to go down, that end to go up, and the bottle goes sailing across the room. Hey, you want to see it again? Uh-huh. Ready? Okay. Three, two, one. Oh, oh, oh. Making a lever at home is easy. All you need is a spoon. This kind of lever is called a catapult. Like all levers, this one has three parts. Two ends and a fulcrum. A fulcrum is where the catapult touches the table. We're going to be using ping pong balls so we don't break anything. Now, catapults are levers and they help us shoot things into the air. While this side only has a little ways to go down, this side has a long ways to go up. Ready? Fire one! Fire two! These are levers, a hammer pulling a nail, a crowbar, and your forearm. Now, what do you need to make a lever? Right, a fulcrum, a pivot, a place to turn around, a stick and a fulcrum, and you've got a lever. It's a simple machine. This is a teeter tot. And with a lever, I can change the directions and forces. All I need is a lever, a long rod or plank, a fulcrum, and a place to push off against. When I go up, I see you. And as I come down, I saw you. It's a seesaw, get it? It's also a lever. <laughs> Today on Consider the Fong, we're going to talk about wheels and levers. So please consider the following. Mira, that means look. If I push down on this side of the lever, this side goes up. We can lift the can. We can do some work. See, the lever pivots about the fulcrum, about the place in the middle. This side down, this side up. Now suppose we took the lever and folded it so it looked like this. Same fulcrum, same lever, but now to get this end to go up, I push on this end sideways. This end sideways, this end up. Okay, suppose we hooked a few of these levers together. So they looked like this. See, it kind of looks like a wheel, doesn't it? See, it's a bunch of levers all pivoting around one fulcrum, like a wheel. Take a look. See? Good afternoon, sports fans. Another exciting test of skill and endurance about to unfold. Timmy Ticker here with Lance Yardstick, and welcome to the annual Tour de Science 93. It's the one we've all been waiting for, the race that pits defending champ, science guy Bill Nye, 
against those ruthless challengers, bad boy Bob Sleafmaster and Mark the Maniac from Down Under. That's right, Timmy. A formidable challenge indeed. Well, I couldn't have said it better myself, Lance. And one other thing, this race will allow us to see just how efficient a machine the bicycle really is. Well, that's right, Timmy. And speaking of machines, did you know that the wheels on bicycles are actually simple machines. Not only that, bicycles also have gears, other wheels, that are also simple machines. That's right, Lance, and I'm sure those simple machines will get quite a workout on the grueling course here today. 15 hills, and boy, are they steep. Well, that's where the gears will come in really handy, Timmy. You see, gears are wheels with teeth. The front gears and the back gears are connected to each other by a chain. By changing the combination of front and back gears, the rider is able to put out a lot less effort for a longer distance, in this case, more cranking on the pedals to get up the hill. Oh, Nelly, it's really something. Well, it sure is, Lance, and the action is just about to start. Using the fire pole is a fast and fun way to get down here, but using it to get back up, well, that's another story. Ah, this is too much work. Let's try something else, like a ladder. But a ladder can be pretty steep, and that has some disadvantages. We could use a ramp and spread the work out. We'll get the same height off the floor by walking a longer distance. It'll be easier to walk, but we'll have to walk farther. Voila! Now there's another way that we use ramps every day. You might not have thought of it before. This is a stairway. It's like a ramp and a ladder combined. Of course, if you don't like the ladder, the ramp, or the stairs, you can use one of these. But you gotta be careful, real careful. I said, uh, careful! Careful. Ramps make things easier to lift. Watch this. If I try to pick this book straight up, watch what happens. I made this ramp out of an old bookshelf and a couple of phone books. If I pull this book straight up the ramp, the string is strong enough and it takes a lot less force. The force we need to pull the book up the ramp is smaller than the force we need to pull it straight up. Cool! And now, Bill Nye in A Scientist Descending a Staircase. A spiral staircase is a lot like a screw. To see why, first you have to get tiny. This is a screw. See how the thread wraps around? It's the same way a spiral staircase wraps around. A screw is a ramp wrapped around a rod. Remember how a staircase is a ramp? Well, a spiral staircase is a screw. So spiral staircases, screws, ramps, Staircases are all simple machines. Huh? A screw is like an incline plane, a ramp wrapped around a stick. The distance between the threads is called the pitch. Look at all the things you can do with it. You can jack up cars, jack up houses. You can even make hamburger. What? That, that can't be right. Something big you need moved? 
Well, then you need something big to move it. And at the Brute Force Moving Company, we're big. It doesn't matter if you want a bear on your roof, dumbbells in your attic, or 10,000 magazines on your coffee table. Here at the Brute Force Moving Company, we always take the fastest, straightest route. We don't care how much force it takes. So if you've got the weight, we've got the crate and the strength to move it straight. The Brute Force Moving Company. This is a, a prosthesis or a, a, an arm for someone who is born without a hand or they have an accident and lose part of their forearm. And they operate it by pulling on the straps that we attach to their back. And it's attached to a cable that when we pull on the cable, it's similar to a bicycle. Uh, when, you, when you pull on the handles for your brakes on the bicycle, it works the same way. It pulls uh, from one end to the other, and that's how they can open it. So when they round their back, they can open the, the hook, and when they let their back flatten out, then the hook closes. Just like a shirt or a blouse, you'd slide, you slide this and consider it like your sleeve. When you reach out there, if you want to grab something out there, you let your other shoulder back. When we make a prosthesis for someone who doesn't have their elbow, we have to be able to bend their elbow as well as open the hook when they're trying to operate it. And in order to get the elbow to bend, we need to make a little lever out in front of the elbow joint so that it bends the elbow when we pull on the cable. So this is a prosthesis for someone who's missing their whole leg. And usually someone who has had cancer um, has an amputation at this level. And this prosthesis has a foot and a knee joint that bends. Uh, the same way that your knee bends. And it also has a hip joint that bends so that when you sit down, you can, you can sit in a chair. Mm -hmm. Sort of like taking the applications of engineering and helping someone to get better. And by knowing about the levered arms and putting the feet in the proper position so they help you to walk just like you and I walk, um, and putting this all together, we can get someone uh, back playing on the playground and running and jumping just like they did before they had their accident. Do you have something big you need moved? Well, then you need people with big ideas about how to move it. And at Simply Movers, we've got big ideas. Need a bicycle in your bedroom? We've got pulleys. A lawyer on your landing? We've got levers. A bundle in a barrow? We've got ramps. So if it's big, if it's heavy, if it's awkward, whatever, we've got a pulley, a ramp, and a lever. Simply Movers. Call us. Now this rope is attached to a crane. And a crane uses pulleys. Simple machines. Of course, they're big simple machines, but they're simple machines. Science! And they're neck and neck. Sleefmeister taking the lead as we go into the second leg of the Tour de Science 93. That's right, Timmy. It's a gear grinding competition between these simple machines. I couldn't have said it better myself, Lance. Say you're building a treehouse and you needed some stuff. Say the stuff was really heavy. What would you do? I'd use pulleys. A pulley makes things easier to lift because it spreads the work. See this rope? Before it just used to go from me to Cammy, but now it goes from me to Cammy to me and then back to Cammy. Now she's gonna have to pull a whole lot more rope to get stuff up here. But more rope means I won't have to work as hard each time I pull down. So now I can lift something he can't. Here it comes. With a pulley, she can pull really heavy stuff all the way to the tree fort. Pulleys. <laughs> No sweat. Back in the 1800s, all these cable cars used to be pulled by horses. Okay, the cable cars operate by a bunch of levers and pulleys. 
which are very simple to operate and maintain. Uh, now I'll take you down below and show you how the grip works. These are the giant pulleys that pull the cable underneath the streets of San Francisco. There's many cables and pulleys that take them around curves and up and down the hills. I need some help, you guys. Who wants to volunteer? We're in the sand. Oh. Okay, here I'm Come on. Okay. Simple by simple machine. And they're headed down the home stretch. Sleetmeister in the lead, but Mark the Maniac fast approaching with last year's winner Bill Nye bringing up the rear. You know, it has been quite a tour to science this year, an incredible cauldron of competitiveness. That's right, Timmy, a stupendous showcase of simple machine. Absolutely, and now Mark the Maniac takes the lead. Boy, is he mean. I know what you mean, Timmy. And Bill Nye now is making his move. Unbelievable. He passes Sleefmeister, and now Mark the Maniac, and it is neck and neck at the wire, and it is Nye by a nose. Yes, Bill Nye wins the Tour de Science 93. Lance is on the scene to get Nye's reaction. Can we get a word with you? Great race, incredible finish. How did you do it? Was it the gear ratios on your very simple machine? That was a big part of it, Lance, big part. And also, you know, I hung back there and I made my move at the end, but I think the biggest thing for me, uh, it's my show. Oh, <laughs> yes, oh, right now. Absolutely. with the National Science Foundation.
Everybody? <laughs> Dear Lord, thank you for the food we are about to receive. And thank you for... I gotta take this. <clears throat> Shut up! You did it now! What a tool. New series, new faces, same rules. Eight Simple Rules starts this Monday at 6.30, only on the Disney Channel. This is Toon News, and I'm Smokey Silvers. Also available for children's parties and bar mitzvahs. <coughs> Welcome to Toon News. I'm Smokey Silvers and proud of it. Say my name. Say my name. This is Smokey Silvers, and we could be friends for a small fee. Here's the news. The Eco has landed. Toon News, Sunday at 10 past 10, only on Toon Disney. All your favorite tunes are on Toon Disney, Sky Digital Channel 613, Telewest Channel 726, or NTL Channel 65 or 698. Can't wait to see what happens in part two, and it's on the way very shortly, so make sure that you stay tuned. Now, then, today's topic of discussion is all about going into space, and right now it's about time we took some callers. Should we wear a school uniform? Do you believe oh, wait, you 7, 9, 20, double 20 is under the call set today. If you want to speak to us, Lizzie's on the line. Hello, Lizzie. Yeah. Hello, Lizzie. Hello. Hello, Lizzie. So, then, tell us what you think about our phone in. Um, well, I think it is. I'd like to go to space, and right now I'm doing a project on space. Oh, wow. oh okay. So I really, really would like to go up to space, but I think it is a bit too expensive to go yeah. up, but it, I think it would be well worth it. It is expensive. It's not like buying a, bo a bus ticket, is it? No. No, but, uh, no. And, and it's only one way as well. Yeah. I think 115,000, it's not a return ticket. Does no. it sound, I don't think so. How do you get back down then? Pardon? How do you get back down? Well, you have to you know, get a return ticket from the spaceman, don't wow. you? Wow. He's got, he's got a little booth up there. Has he? Yeah, with a little cash register floating in space. Um, you, you have to buy a return ticket. Lizzie, thank you for your call. Nice to hear from you. Good luck with your project. Uh, Alice is there as well. Hello, Alice. Hello. Alice, what would you like to say? Um, I'd like to say, like, when you go up to space, you, like, should lower it. And um, when you lower it, I mean, like, lower the price. Oh, you like, like, okay. You meant lower space. space. And then... Yeah. Um, so lower that you think 115,000 is too expensive. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I did think you were saying lower space. I thought if you if you were trying to say bring space closer to us that way, they'd have to lower the price as well I because would. the journey time would be shorter. Certainly. So you wouldn't use as much rocket fuel. Exactly, and you wouldn't be on the vessel for as much time. No. That way, having to charge you smaller amounts. It'd still be a return fare though. Thank Here's you. Here's like family part two. <laughs> gym class? No, that's me. Oh. Who is she and why does she have her own song? Did someone take my lunch? Pepper Ann, Pepper Ann, marching in her own parade. Pepper Ann, she's like one in a million. Pepper Ann, Pepper Ann, much too cool for seventh grade. No one's cooler than Pepper Ann. She's her own biggest fan, Pepper Ann. Oh, cool, Maracas. Catch her if you can, Pepper Ann. pot. Hundreds of different cultures both bubbling together like cheese on a hot plate to form a single great nation. Each of you will research one nationality of your family heritage. And then I want you to bust a hype presentation for the class. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised by the variety of ethnic spices we have in our very own little melting pot. My family can be traced back hundreds of years to the Kanaka Maui people of the Hawaiian archipelago. The Lederhosen lineage is descended from the Bavarian royalty. You might say we are the Bavarian cream of the crop. We are 100% African American. Uh, I think my family's from Cleveland, maybe? I've never told you about our family history, Peppy? Shame on me. 
Your great uncle Miran immigrated here from the old country in 1915, barely escaping the persecution Boring. of. Boring! Isn't there something in here a little more exotic? Well, this is only our recent history. I know your grandparents have traced the Lily family back centuries. This is it the life size Lily family tree. Whoa! Am I up there? You betcha! Branch 9, Trig 42. As you can see, the tree dates back to the early 1300s and is comprised of four main trunks. English, Belgian, Polish, and Russian. Each plaque represents hundreds of years of... There's got to be something up here more exciting than that. Isn't there a chance that one of our ancestors' DNA was fused with extraterrestrials? Didn't your Aunt Gertrude have an extra thumb on her left hand? Gertie could type like nobody's business. Hey, what's this? Ah, uh, well, uh, you see, Peppy, um, after your parents' divorce, uh, well, uh, we, uh... It's your father's side of the family! I'm sorry, Pepper Ann. All I really know is that my father was British and my mother's side of the family originally came from Spain. And you don't have any clue beyond that? Well, now, wait a second. There is something. My mother gave it to me. It was passed down on her side of the family from your great-great-grandmother, who was a Navajo. Wow. I never knew much about her. All I know is that I'm one-eighth Navajo, so I guess that makes you one-sixteenth American Indian, Pepper Ann. You mean I'm a real-life Indian? Cool! For my presentation, I will be tracing the religious struggles of the Little family in Britain, from the early stages of Calvinism through their pilgrimage to the New World in the mid-18th century. Check it out! I'm an Indian! <laughs> It's all set. Mom helped me track down some real live Navajos living right here in Hazelnut. They're coming over tonight to help me with my report. Ask them about their art and craft techniques, PA. Navajo weaving is totally legendary. The contributions of all American Indian tribes to our national culture have been long overlooked. Oh, I totally know what you mean. Where would the Lone Ranger have been without Tonto? Uh, Pepper Ann, while your enthusiasm is commendable... Maybe we should help you out with your research. Maybe, maybe. This girl needs help more than the Donner Party needed a compass and a hot pizza. P.A., check this. The Navajo language is way complex. And precise. There are over 30 ways to say the word wind in Navajo. After you knock the cavalry guys off their horses, you can press Control-Alt-T to tomahawk them. <laughs> the Navajo people place incredible importance on their children. Newborn babies are welcomed into the tribe with this cool blessing ritual called a hozanihi. Why must the Pale Ones disrespect our good Earth so? Ta-da! What do you think? Should I go with the Village Persons Ensemble, or should I stick with the Blando Lakes Butter look? I don't think you're ready to meet with this Navajo family. What are you talking about? This ensemble screams, Indian! Pepper Ann, you're basing all of this on stereotypes! She's right, P.A. Just because I'm Hawaiian, you don't see me walking around in a grass skirt dancing the hula. At least, not often. You cannot hope to understand the special bond I share with my tribe. Unlike you two, we paint with all the colors of the wind. Are you sure they're gonna want to eat all this? I mean, it is only September. Mom, haven't you seen the pictures of the first Thanksgiving? This is the authentic food of my people. But, Peppy, the American Indians who participated in the first Thanksgiving were Algonquins, not Navajos. Shh! My people are close, 10, maybe 15 minutes away. They're not due for another two hours. They're 10, maybe 15 minutes away. This book doesn't say anything about the Navajos using war drums. Just keep banging or it's back in the cradle board with you. You must be Pepper Ann. How? Now don't tell me, let me guess. You must be something like Taming Bear or He Who Shoots Arrow with Big Bow. <laughs> Am I close? Well, I'm 
Dave. This is my mom and dad, Carol and Bob. And the quiet one in the back is my grandfather, Andy. You know, not all American Indians have American Indian names. Just like not all Italian Americans are named Vinny or Vito. I'm just glad you followed my smoke signals. I was afraid you might have been lost driving around in your horseless carriage. <gasps> uh, actually, we just downloaded directions from the internet. Well, come in, come in. My teepee is your teepee. Actually, the traditional Navajo dwelling is called a hogan, and it's built... <laughs> this is my little sister, Moose. You can call her Running Moose or Jumping Moose or Vinny if you want. That's my mom, and the cat over there is Steve. My spirit guide. Oh, I hope you're all hungry. Of course they're hungry, Mom. The white man has driven the once plentiful buffalo herds from our plains. Never had buffalo. Tried that ostrich meat once, supposed to be very low in fat. Well, say, have you tried that crab with a K? You know, they say it's imitation, but you would swear it... Hold it, wait. I've set up our little powwow out back. Peppy, I really don't think... Uh, Pepper Ann, your braided hair looks like it might be Lakota. Navajo men and women traditionally wear their hair twisted into a chongo, a figure eight shape. Yeah, I was going for a kind of Pocahontas thing, but it sort of turned into more of a sporty spice. Pepper Ann, I think you need to understand that... Who wants corn on the cob? <laughs> Please excuse my pale-faced mother. She means maize. Ah, sure has been hot lately. Hot and dry. Now you're talking. Who's up for a little rain dance? Oh, 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 Enough! Oh, oh. I, do you have any idea how offensive this is to our culture? I thought you invited us here to learn about being Navajo. Oh, totally. I want to learn how to sneak up on people without them hearing, how to give gifts and take them right back again. You know, all that good stuff. Everyone, the car. Now. What? What did I do? Can't we just smoke them the peace pipe and talk this over? I recognize your belt. Both these Navajo Concho belts were made by my great-grandfather, an ancestor we both share. Unfortunately, that is all we share. What happened? I thought I was just learning about my background. That's just it, Peppy. You weren't interested in learning anything. They barely got to talk. All I wanted to do was show them how much I knew about our culture from stuff I picked up on TV and in the movies and from comic books and... Yes, but that's what stereotyping is, Peppy. Even when it's done with the best of intentions. You can't believe things about any group of people without getting to know them first. Um, I'm sorry to bother you, but, uh... I guess I owe you all an apology. What's she doing here? Tell Polka Moranis to hit the bricks or all. I respect you for coming here, and I believe that your intentions are good. But the best way to learn about any people is to drop your preconceived notions and approach them with an open mind and heart. Whoa! Are you like the wise medicine man of your tribe? <laughs> You're thinking only in stereotypes again, my friend. I was a corporate lawyer for 20 years. Come on, sit down. We ordered Chinese. There are over 300 federally recognized American Indian tribes in North America, and each one has its own distinctive culture and heritage. The name Navajo was given to our people by the Spanish missionaries. We call ourselves Diné, the old Navajo land, the Dineta, stretched from what is now Colorado through New Mexico and into Arizona. It is believed that the earliest Diné may have migrated to this land from the north over 1,200 years ago. And then, during World War II, the Navajo language was used as a code for the U.S. Navy in the South Pacific and was never broken. Today, the Navajo Nation is one of the largest American Indian tribes in the United States. And I'm proud that my heritage includes a people who are some of the original ingredients to our great American melting pot.
everybody? <laughs> Dear Lord, thank you for the food we are about to receive. And thank you for... I gotta take this. <laughs> What's up? You did it now! What a tool. New series, new faces, same rules. Eight Simple Rules starts this Monday at 6.30, only on the Disney Channel. We are so looking forward to those new episodes next week. We can't wait. Now then, stick around today because part two of Like Family is coming your way in just a few moments' time. Yes, and we've got a great movie for you tonight at 7 o'clock. It's Pocahontas 2, Journey to a New World. Take a look at our great movie menu for the rest of the week. Grandmother Willow, I need to speak with you. A dog, a fruit bowl, that's what we're to phone is about. That Max on the line, hello Max. Hey. Hi Max. Hello. 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 Max, what would you do in this situation? Well, what I would do, you know, you have to admit sometimes dogs can be a bit clumsy. Yeah. So if she's already done it, the mum's come in, told the dog off a bit. Yeah. So she just close her mouth, let the, just let the dog take the blame. No harm, no tears. Yep. Um, the dog gets a bit of telling off and everyone's happy. True, because dogs can't talk. Obviously myself and I are having a bit what? of a direct... What? What? They can. They, oh, Thanks, pardon? Max. Huh? Dogs you... can talk, can't yes, they? Yes, they can talk. Thank you very much. What dog have you spoken to in your life, Max? Oh, I've spoken to King Charles Cavaliers quite a lot. Yeah, OK. Max, you're worrying me, so goodbye to you. Thanks, Jack. Max. Jack said, Jack. Hello. I, I Hi, don't Jack. want to know what you're going to do about the, uh, about the dilemma. All I want to know from you is, please, please help me on this. Max has just said that dogs can talk. Jack. Yes? Yeah? Talk sense. Talk sense to me. They can't, can they? Yes, they can. So, they Mark, can. shut up. Of course they can. Nigel, you are my boy. Of course they can Thanks talk. Thanks very much. You're, you're my boy, too. Who, who's, who's running this phone room? Well, I don't know. Clearly we're getting mad they, callers they on the line. Great, though. I need to talk to somebody. Thanks for your input. Nice to hear from you. Keep them coming. <laughs>